You see them stalking through the halls, their clanking metal bodies, their wide, glowing eyes. Or do you? Maybe your mind is playing tricks on you, making you think the animatronics are moving when they're not. But you can't be sure. The security monitors are sketchy and unreliable, covered in old scan lines. Did Freddy Fazbear just turn to look at the camera? Five more nights, you say to yourself. Then you'll get your payment. It's such a simple job. Well, more of a gig, really. Working late night security at a children's pizzeria. Easy money, you thought. Easiest money you've ever made. Until the voice on the phone told you that sometimes the animatronics get restless. If they see you, they might grab you and shove you inside the metal coffins of their bodies. Never to be seen again. You hear something rustling outside the door. You try to deploy the security door, but it doesn't have sufficient charge. It's too late anyway. Freddy's seen you. You turn to see his glowing eyes staring at you in the doorway. Your entire body tenses up as the room lights flicker, and suddenly, you can't see him there. But where's he gone? Quick as a flash, Freddy is right in front of you, screaming nightmarishly into your face. It's the most terrified you've ever been. His chest opens up like a rusty drawbridge, revealing the darkness within, as his heavy metal hands grab you by the shoulders and force you in. Your world disappears as his metal ribcage closes around you like some giant mousetrap breaking you in its vice grip. And to think, it was all for a little extra money over summer vacation. Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, a place where fantasy meets fun. Children across America love to play games and eat pizza while interacting with the colorful, lovable characters. Freddy Fazbear, Chica Chicken, Bonnie Rabbit, and Foxy the Pirate. It's the perfect place for tired parents to let their kids and their imaginations run wild. However, this seemingly kid-friendly restaurant harbors dark secrets and the place is far from welcoming. If you're unlucky enough to be working there at night, you might think the story behind the hit gaming franchise is simple, but the reality is anything but. The story of Five Nights at Freddy's begins with two men, Henry Emily and William Afton, the founders of Fazbear Entertainment. Though at the beginning the franchise was small, consisting of only one location, Fredbear Family Diner. Henry was an engineer and a toy maker, specializing in using a mix of animatronics, robotics, and computer programming to create highly sophisticated automatons. William, though, he also had a background in engineering, serving more as the financial manager of their business. Thanks to a combination of Henry's artistry and William's business savvy, the restaurant flourished, becoming a popular destination for families across the state. However, despite the apparently innocent origins of the company, there was always a darkness lurking just below the surface. While Henry was in it for the love of his craft, William had more sinister motives. Through his working relationship with Henry, he had noticed that his partner's work was decades ahead of his time, and he became increasingly jealous. Henry's animatronics could be programmed to perform extremely complex tasks with the aid of rudimentary AI systems that not even larger companies like Disney had figured out at the time. The most impressive of Henry's inventions, however, were the spring lock suits. These were robotic armatures that could either move on their own or be worn by a performer as a mascot suit. Henry was responsible for innovations that could have made millions if sold to military contractors or manufacturing companies, but he had chosen to use his talent hosting children's birthday parties and making subpar pizza. The building animosity between the two men came to a head in 1987 at the height of Fred Baird Family Diner's popularity, when a tragic accident forced the restaurant to close. Both Henry and William were fathers. Henry had a daughter named Charlotte, while William had three children, two sons and a daughter. The name of William's oldest son has been lost to time, but his other two children were Michael and Elizabeth. All four children regularly visited their fathers at work, and as the children of the owners, got to host their birthday parties there for free. It was at one such party that the first of many disasters took place at Fazbear Entertainment. Afton's oldest son, like many teenage boys, loved to torment his younger brother, and he was well aware of the fact that although Michael was a fan of Freddy, he had nightmares about the onstage animatronics. So at Michael's birthday party, his brother lifted the crying child up to the stage and pressed his face up to the open mouth of the singing Freddy animatronic, telling him to give Freddy a kiss. Unfortunately, the animatronics weren't deactivated in time, so as Freddy continued to sing, his robotic jaws clamped onto Michael's head. And well, you can probably imagine what happened there. Michael survived long enough to be taken to the hospital where he slipped into a coma and was put on life support. During this time, he regressed into a strange, recursive nightmare that took place in his childhood bedroom, a place of comfort but also of hidden terror. While he tried to hide himself away under the covers, nightmares tried to claw their way into his room and eat him alive. He didn't realize it at first, but the twisted demons trying to get in were nightmare versions of the very mascots that populated the restaurant his father co-owned. 
The only weapon Michael had to fend off these familiar demons was a flashlight, with the batteries running lower every second. It didn't do him much good, because even when all the other creatures were scared away, one more came forward, the personification of the very angel of death itself, a being known simply as Nightmare. Michael tried his best to ward off Nightmare, but it was a futile effort. Perhaps all these terrible fantasies were a kind of glimpse into the future, and of all the terrible atrocities that his very own father would commit in what everyone else thought was a chain of innocent pizza restaurants. Eventually, Michael succumbed to his injuries in his sleep. The incident became known as the Bite of 87, and lived on in eternal infamy. William was furious. In his mind, Henry had allowed his son to die, and after that day, William made it his mission to sabotage Henry's work. He started stealing plans for new creations from Henry's workshop, plans which he would eventually build on and use to start his own company, Afton Robotics. Henry remained oblivious as the pair worked on building their new and improved restaurant, this time rebranding as Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. The Freddy and Bonnie Springlock suits were kept, but new animatronics were designed and built specifically for the new location. This location would be bigger, with arcade machines, prizes, and a bigger stage that allowed for a full animatronic band. Something strange started to happen at the new location, though. The Freddy Springlock suit, which was the same animatronic that fatally wounded Michael Afton, started acting up. When it was in animatronic mode, it started to move in ways it wasn't programmed to, and when it was in suit mode, the staff would find it in places they didn't remember putting it. Those working at the restaurant started to theorize that it was Michael's ghost doing these things, and initially, William didn't believe it. But as he was examining the suit to try and better copy its design, he found that the metal in the suit's armature was different somehow. Through further research, William found that the death of his son had charged the metal inside the suit with a kind of energy, an energy which he started calling Remnant. William Afton had just stumbled onto the secret of creating life, and this is where the real tragedy and horror of Fazbear Entertainment began. William's experiment started small, with animals. His first successful fusion of robotic parts with psychic remnant was on a dog that had been run over. He was able to fuse the dog's soul to one of the scrapped animatronics, an unfinished fox character named Mangle. He spent more and more time in his workshop, completely neglecting his wife and his two surviving children. He would never admit it, but the incident with Michael, fused with his economic resentment of William, had driven him completely insane. Either that or he'd always had some psychopathic tendencies lurking deep inside him, and recent events had been the key that unlocked this bottomless well of darkness within. Soon, William had gotten as far as he possibly could with animal experimentation. Now he had to move to the next phase. His research mattered more to him than the lives of any human beings, even his and Henry's very own pizza party clientele. He found his first subject while at Freddy's. Due to a scheduling error, the staff member who normally wore the Bonnie Springlock suit was unable to take their shift, and William volunteered to take his place. While walking around the floor and interacting with the children, he came across a girl standing by the fruity maze cabinet and crying. William asked her what was wrong. I miss my puppy, she told him, and William realized that this was the owner of the dog he'd been experimenting on. He told her, he's not dead, I can take you to him. He asked her what her name was, and she said it was Susie. Nobody in the restaurant seemed to notice the golden Bonnie leading Susie back to the employees only area, but after that, she was never seen again. Three more children went missing from Freddy Fazbear's Pizza that year. When their bodies were found, they had been stuffed into the body cavities of the animatronics. Henry had become increasingly stressed out about the safety of his own daughter and increasingly suspicious of his business partner. He cut all professional ties with William Afton and barred him from entering the restaurant. To improve security, Henry fully upgraded the restaurant's technology. New versions of Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, and Freddy were given facial recognition capabilities that connected them to local police. All visitors now needed microchipped wristbands, and a new animatronic called the Prize Puppet was also designed with the dual purposes of handing toys to children and blocking the door if an adult tried to leave with a child they had not come in with. But even this didn't prove to be enough security. William Afton had managed to disguise himself as a security guard, giving him enough time to temporarily disable the puppet and lure Henry's daughter, Charlotte, outside. The puppet, realizing that a child had been abducted, followed Charlotte outside into the rain, interrupting William before he could leave with the child. But it was still too late. She was already another victim of William's experiments. Too damaged from the rain to return inside and notify the authorities, the puppet lay down next to Charlotte, her soul imprinting onto the robot as it left her body. As she had been the restaurant owner's daughter in life, the possessed puppet became the de facto leader of the possessed animatronics, commanding them to attack anyone they saw dressed as a security guard. Distraught, 
Henry abandoned the restaurant and retreated from the public eye. Rumors abounded that he was responsible for the deaths, and after a while it was believed that he had died himself. Meanwhile, William Afton, through his new company Afton Robotics, bought the Fazbear brand. He started to expand the franchise, opening not only more Freddy locations, but also sister locations, Chica's Party World and Circus Baby's Pizza World. These new sister locations were where he would debut his latest and most horrific creations. William needed more test subjects, but he knew that the more he kept killing, the closer he would get to being caught. So he had been working tirelessly on a solution to that problem, performing robots that also acted as the perfect covert method for abductions. <laughs> Using a mix of his own research and the technology stolen from Henry, he created the Funtime animatronics. They were sleeker and more robotic than the furry puppets that had been used at the original Freddy's and were much more autonomous, relying more on learning AI than pre-programmed actions. However, these robots had a dark secret. They were designed with hollow chest cavities and the ability to mimic voices, which made them perfect for kidnappings. The key to their success was something William had stolen from Henry, a chip that could use infrasound to manipulate perception. Henry had designed them to make his animatronics appear more lifelike in the minds of children, but William used it to make his victims more susceptible and less afraid. The crown jewel of the fun time line was Circus Baby, a large humanoid robot designed to look like a clown. William tried to keep others from seeing her before she was finished, but his daughter Elizabeth caught a glimpse of her in her father's workshop and became instantly obsessed. William warned her not to go near Circus Baby, but Elizabeth couldn't stay away. On the very first day that Circus Baby was put on stage, Elizabeth got too close. She was lured in with ice cream and balloons and pulled into the suit. While this was a tragedy that destroyed his family, causing his wife to leave with the remaining child, it ultimately proved William's theory. Elizabeth's spirit had bonded to the robot that absorbed her, and because of Baby's more advanced language capability, she was able to confirm this fact herself. She started speaking as Elizabeth, referring to William Afton as her father. Spurred on by this discovery, William built a new creation, one that wasn't intended for public display. It was an extremely lifelike humanoid robot built using the AI technology that powered the Funtime animatronics using metal that had been salvaged from the remains of the Freddy Springlock suit. William named his new robot Michael, after the son whose spirit he had infused into his machinery. William hoped to repeat this process with the other possessed animatronics, because if he perfected the method, he'd essentially have the key to immortality. He went back to the original Freddy's location one night with the plan to steal the old animatronics just like he had done with the golden Freddy suit. This didn't go well for William though. Even after all these years, Charlotte Emily still recognized the one who had killed her and all the others. She attacked William, and out of fear, he retreated into the remaining Springlock Bonnie suit. Unfortunately, years of rust had left the locks unreliable, and the metal armature came loose, crushing William to death in the very suit he'd used to abduct his victims all those years ago. This left the robotic Michael alone and without purpose. Thanks to the perception chip, Michael was indistinguishable from an ordinary human, and because he had inherited the childhood memories of the original Michael Afton, not even he realized that he was a robot. He began searching for answers about his father's dark past, applying for jobs at varying levels within the Fazbear Company. He worked as a security guard at a number of franchises, experiencing firsthand the hauntings that terrorized the various Freddy's locations, but learning nothing more about his father's work. The answers would come to him when he applied for a position as a technician at Circus Baby's Pizza World. While there, he discovered his sister, now in the form of Baby, who recognized that he was a human soul in a robot body just like her. She and the other Funtime animatronics used Michael as their escape route, scooping out his internal mechanisms and replacing them with a combination of their own. When miraculously Michael survived this, he fully realized the truth. He was a robot whose design was perfected through murder and human experimentation. However, William wasn't out of the picture as you might have assumed. When Fazbear Entertainment tried to run a haunted attraction out of one of the old Freddy's locations, they uncovered the Springlock Bonnie suit still containing William Afton's corpse, and as you might have expected, the body in the suit didn't stay dead. Like his son and daughter, his spirit had fused with the metal that had killed him, giving birth to the entity known as Springtrap. Michael caught wind of this, and knowing that his father's spirit would likely return to the old habits and begin stalking Freddy's locations, he applied for a managerial position at the newest of the franchises. It was a strange job. His superior only ever seemed to speak to him via tape recording and part of his job involved salvaging scrap animatronics that mysteriously appeared in the back alley every night after his shift. There was Baby and Funtime Freddy, both looking worse for wear since the most recent time Michael had seen them. 
a suspiciously new-looking black bear named Lefty, and of course Springtrap. Once Michael had salvaged all the animatronics, there was one more tape from his mysterious employer. In this tape, his unseen supervisor revealed his identity. He was Henry Emily, who had come back to put a much-deserved stop to the destruction and tragedy that his creations had caused. The whole restaurant had been designed as a beacon and a trap for any remaining possessed animatronics. In the tape, he addressed Elizabeth as well as Charlotte, who had jumped from the puppet into Lefty, and any other victims whose spirits were bound to the animatronics. Henry commanded them all to be still and leave their robotic bodies. As the temperature in the restaurant started to climb, he addressed Michael, saying that he could leave if he wanted, even though he sensed that Michael would choose to stay. He had one more message for William Afton. The darkest pit of hell is open to swallow you whole, so don't keep the devil waiting, old friend. The tape ran out, and the building went up in flames. The dark saga of William Afton and the cursed Freddy Fazbear's animatronics had come to a close, for now.